my specialty is uh, constitutional law and public law more broadly. Uh, and one of the things that I have learned over the past decade uh, is that uh, globalization is having an important effect on uh, domestic constitutional law and public law. Uh, this occurs not merely because uh, domestic regimes have to accommodate uh, directly applicable international law, uh, but because the influences that are affecting the development of international law also affect the thinking of domestic constitutional lawyers. Uh, so first, uh, with respect to legal education, uh, it's important for people interested in domestic constitutional law to uh, gain some acquaintance with and even facility in uh, transnational or international uh, developments. Uh, again, uh, because having that knowledge will uh, uh, improve their uh, ability to practice and understand their own domestic uh, systems. Uh, in addition, uh, globalization has uh, almost by definition generated high degrees of mobility of capital and labor, uh, and that mobility affects how um, domestic constitutional regimes uh, can respond to problems that, uh, uh, of employment, for example, or investment that previously had only a, a domestic dimension. Uh, one of the consequences of this mobility, again, both of capital and of uh, labor, uh, has been what uh, some uh, authors have referred to as the globalization of constitutional law or the development of a generic constitutional law. Uh, the logic is straightforward, um, uh, mobile capital and, and to some degree uh, mobile labor uh, requires a reasonably uniform system of rules so that people will know uh, the legal regimes under which they're going to be regulated when they re relocate either personally or, or uh, relocate their capital. Uh, so again, uh, legal education has to respond to uh, globalization by uh, fostering some understanding of these again, generic or worldwide trends, uh, even though the trends manifest themselves differently in specific domestic constitutional systems. Globalizing legal education is uh, a difficult problem because of reasons that have uh, been widely discussed among comparativists uh, for decades, maybe even since the foundation of the field about a hundred years ago. Uh, um, these difficulties are uh, the problem of, uh, of ensuring that uh, national uh, or local peculiarities uh, are um, attended to uh, in, in legal education uh, while conveying some understanding of broader non-national, uh, extranational or supranational trends. Uh, in comparative law generally, the difficulty has been uh, framed as one of navigating the, uh, the, the passage between local particularity and comparative universality. Um, that will always be a challenge because for the most part, most of what people need to learn as, as budding lawyers is domestic law. And for the most part, that domestic law will not have dramatically large influences from outside the nation. Uh, but in some areas, uh, and in some areas uh, that almost every lawyer will have contact with, uh, non-national legal material is important. And so lawyers have to learn uh, something about that non-national material. 
Uh, my favorite example of this uh, is uh, in the area of family law. Uh, family law is historically regarded as one of the most uh, domestic uh, subjects uh, concerned with family arrangements according to the specific culture of a particular nation. Uh, and yet, uh, every practitioner of family law in the United States uh, now has to know something about the Hague Convention on the civil aspects of the, I guess it's called abduction of children, uh, because there are now so many marriages uh, between U.S. nationals and nationals of another nation, uh, and so many of those marriages uh, run into difficulty, uh, that the Hague Convention is something that every practitioner of family law will encounter uh, at some point during her or his career.